A great example of texture is sandpaper. Not in that it feels rough, but rather if you look at the surface, it's made of millions of tiny particles that can be oriented in a wide variety of ways. They could be randomly oriented, lying flat on the paper but random in rotation, or perfectly in alignment. The performance of sandpaper is dependent on this. If the flat sides are parallel to the surface, very little sanding can be accomplished. The orientation of crystals is what's measured in a texture experiment. In order to measure the texture of a material, X-ray diffraction is used. X-ray diffraction is a technique sensitive to the atomic distances in a material. In a texture experiment, the instrument is locked onto a single atomic spacing. Then the sample is rotated and tilted with the intensity of the emitted signal proportional to the number of crystallites oriented in each direction. Tilts can be accomplished by tilting the sample to the side, called side inclination, or by offsetting the incident and diffracted beam, called isoinclination. In the case of the strongest orientation, we can imagine every particle being in perfect alignment. If we project the surface normal of the crystals to a hemisphere surrounding the paper, we would see sharp spots positioned on the surface. Looking down on this hemisphere shows a radial map with sharp spots. It may also be useful to look at the face diagonal of the cube-shaped crystals. In this case, we also see a spot pattern, but the spots are located at different locations. And as a final example, we could look at the body diagonal in a similar fashion. In all cases, we see a spot pattern emerge with very sharp orientation. If we now perform a similar analysis on another piece of sandpaper where all the crystals are pointing straight up but they are randomly rotated, we see a slightly different pattern emerge. We see concentric circles centered on the rotation axis of the crystals. One last example to look at is one where the crystals are completely randomly oriented. Instead of spots or circles, the entire map is covered in constant intensity. Each of these plots is a map of a specific atomic plane of the crystal in the sample. These are called pole figures. In some cases, the pole figures are all that is needed and the job is done. In other cases, a single orientation model which takes into account the three independent pole figures is needed. There are many ways to model the crystalline components of a texture, including modeling an actual physical texture or using a series of mathematical equations. The end result is a single sample model which explains the measured pole figures. This sample model is called the Orientation Distribution Function, or ODF. The ODF uses a special coordinate system used to describe the orientation of crystallites in 3D space, called Euler angles. Euler coordinates have three values, phi1, phi, and phi2. The ODF is often imaged as a box shape with the length of sides depending on crystal symmetry. In the case of a cubic crystal, all sides are the same length of 90 degrees. The orientation of each crystallite in the sample is mapped into this box. In the case of a single crystal, a small spot is seen. The more perfect the crystal, the smaller the spot. The more defects in the crystal, the larger the spot. This is where the term spherical texture comes from. In the case of a fiber orientation, we said the direction is well known in two directions, but random in the third. This would correspond to a line or fiber passing through the box, like a wormhole through an apple. In the real world, orientation components are often a mixture between spherical and fiber, known as an elliptical component. The last case was isotropic, where again, it corresponds to intensity everywhere. It is often hard to use these 3D models in reports and for quantification, so often this 3D box is sliced into sections, resulting in a series of squares. Each square has a side of phi 1 and phi, with each cut representing a specific phi 2. Texture is important in optimizing both mechanical and electrical properties of materials. A random texture tends to resist brittle failure, as it is difficult for cracks to transfer from one crystallite to the next. On the other hand, the properties of a material, whether electrical or mechanical, are optimal in one crystallographic direction, allowing components to be pushed to new limits. Understanding the orientation of a material and the effects of processing steps on that orientation is important to unlocking its full potential.